So let's talk about the circumstances surrounding my mom's death. My mom had been sick for a while and she was declining. And I got a call that she was moved from, or that she, they were going to call an ambulance to transport her because she could not ride in a cart um, to transport her to the hospital. She had already had a UTI before, so I thought it was another UTI. And UTIs, when you get older, I'm not a nurse or anything, but UTIs, as I have seen, have been very serious when you get older. So I went to the hospital and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go up there and visit her. It's going to be UTI. She's going to be fine. I'm just going to go over there and let her know that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still here and I'm caring for her. She's okay. Um, because, you know, I had my kids and I dropped my kids off. I believe I dropped them off at school. No, it was the summertime, so they were at the summer program. So I dropped my kids off, went to the hospital, get to the hospital, and they take me aside and they say, hey, um, th these are the circumstances. Um, and at this point, we believe that your mom deserves hospice care. You know, my mom had been in hospice care before during the pandemic. So I was like, okay, hospice again. Here we go again. I put her in there. And she, they were like, okay, we'll put her in office. And, you know, this is a serious issue. She needs to be, um, cause you know, in hospice care, it's to help her become comfortable. So they were going to put her in hospice care. And I need to sign the papers to put her in hospice care. They said they were going to transfer her from the hospital to hospice care, wherever it was, in the next couple of days. So at the time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell everybody when, um, they transport her because they're about to transport her in a few days. I'll let them know she's in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. So I sign the papers. I go in the room with my mom and she's laying there and my uncle's in there. And I look at her and I'm like, hey, mom. And I'm talking to her like regular, normal. Like, hey, mom, I'm here and this and that. At this time, she wasn't talking as much because like I said, she had been declining a lot over the past few months. So she looks at me and she's like, kind of like, oh, you know, like, oh. like she didn't say anything, but it's like, oh, and I look around, she was a minister. So I knew I'd been with her before to other people, visiting other people. She put on the music, she put on the scriptures and, um, they were telling me that, um, you know, my mom was having difficulties and that she probably would pass away in the next few days. I'm like, oh God. So I'm trying to get her ready. And I'm hoping that, you know, things get better. And they were like, well, at this point, like, this isn't, this is like between the time the hosp I signed the hospice papers to the time that I'm in the room is less than 20 minutes. Less than, less, about less than 20 minutes. And basically within, I, I, my uncle left. I did the scripture with her. Um, Psalm, you know, Psalm 91, Psalm 23. Psalm 1, um, the, just the scriptures that she would love. And I did, um, a couple of songs with her. Uh, what is that? The, it was it, like medley songs, you know, like Carlton Pearson, Azusa Street stuff. And, um, the last song that I played for her was, um, I will trust in the Lord until I die. And at the end of that song, that was Donnie McClurkin. The end of the song, I will trust in the Lord until I die. She was gone. And that was less than 20 minutes. Less than 20 minutes from the time that I signed the papers for hospice, got the text alert on my phone. She's in hospice. I'm like, okay, great. We're going to move her and she'll be out of here in a couple of days and da da da. She was gone like that. And at the time, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I have to pick up my kids. It's a lot going on. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, she passed away. She passed away the way she wanted to pass away. I was with her. She was in prayer. She was in praise. She was worshiping and she drifted off to sleep and she didn't wake up. And that is, that is, that is what happened. There was no other better way for her to go because I didn't want her to be by herself. I didn't want her to be with someone else who could not, who could not do what she wanted done. If you know my mom, she was a praying woman. She was a minister. This, that's it. So, 
in the hospice papers, it states, I asked you, who do you want to notify in case of emergency? I said, for me, I will notify everyone because I'm the POA and I have everyone's numbers and I'm trying to get her transported to this hospice before, you know, I've already had issues with my brother. He had already been um, bringing police every couple every couple of days to my mom's nursing care. Um, the police were telling me that they were irritated at the fact that you know they would come up to the nursing care facility and there was nothing wrong. They were just there, um, and they had basically told my brother to back off or get in touch with me if he wanted to connect with my mother. But at the time, he had been banned from the nursing facility because he was harassing the staff and the residents were starting to complain to their families and the neighbors were starting to complain because the cops were in their neighborhood every few days. So it was becoming a big scene. So at the time when I put my mom in hospice, I was ready to notify my family and let them know once we got her settled so they can come up there to the hospital or, hosp or hospice care um, because of the circumstances. But like I said, within 20 minutes, she was gone from the time I signed those papers. Got that alert that she was in hospice care. Put on the music and that was it. So anyway, um, she called or she, she called. Um, I had called or I was going to go home and call. I had called a friend, friend, friend of mine, a church member who knew that I was on my way to the hospital. It was one of her friends and, um, I'm friends with the daughter, her daughter. And I was letting them know what happened and they were like, oh my God, like you were just saying you were going up there just to visit. And all of a sudden she passed. I'm like, yes, it was that quick. And so, um, um, as I'm on the phone with, um, family and I'm on my way back, um, on my way back, I get to the house and I'm talking to the neighbors who happen to be distant cousins and they were asking me to go out, do they want me, can they help me? And I was like, I want to notify my brother. My brother had been hostile up until this point and I'll let you know in another video how hostile it really got. Um, but at that point, the cousin calls, the neighbor calls, and he answers the phone and he says, thank you or something like, thank you. I've already been notified. So I'm like, how has he been notified? Nobody's been notified. He said that the hospital notified him. Well, the hospice was hospital and hospice were not supposed to notify him. I was the only point of contact for anyone. So who called him from the hospital? I still, to this day, don't know who called him from the hospital, but that is actually a HIPAA violation, and I may or may not address that situation, but the fact that someone, anyone can get your information, not knowing the history behind why your information is not being given out, that is very scary. It's very scary because I can be sitting in a hospital. Um, and like I said, I was pregnant. I can be sitting in a hospital and my information be given out and someone randomly comes up there and gets access to me because you decided that you were going to make a phone call. Hey, your mom passed. Why are you, whoever you are that, that notified my brother, why are you the person that needs to notify my brother that my mother passed away? I felt like it should come from a family member. So at this point, um, a little bit later, my brother shows up to the house and he gets very irate and I had to call the police. And the next thing I heard about my brother was the phone call from the medical examiner's office saying that I murdered my mother in the middle of doing funeral arrangements.